the sign of the function. Instead of uh, finding maximum of function, we can choose the sign of this function and we can um, uh, look for the minimum of function. And uh, um, uh, so that there is a definition of uh, global max, uh, maximum, local maximum. Just uh, the general questions. How do you understand what is the problem of optimization? And we have uh, signs that uh, how to uh, formulate the optimization problem in general that we should among the elements uh, of our variables belongs to some set which is defined by constraints if there are so we need to find such one element for which we have the minimum or the maximum value of given objective function so and uh, that would be enough it's um, a rather small question just general idea of optimization well uh, what what are the main points can you please just say exactly the main points we didn't get it so uh, for the question of optimization problem, uh, you should uh, tell me uh, that uh, the uh, general optimization problem is uh, formulated as um, the finding uh, among uh, the set of elements of variables, such element or vector of element, uh, such vector or such uh, point, uh, uh, so that function in this point has the minimum value, the objection function has the minimum value and uh, uh, that uh, there are several types uh, to be more exactly two types uh, without uh, optimization without constraints and optimization with some constraints uh, the constraint optimization can be um, with equality or inequality constraints. And uh, besides that, um, uh, there are ideas of global and local maximum. What are they? What are they? And uh, in which cases we can say that um, we cannot say that uh, the uh, point of global maximum is the same for local uh, as for local maximum or vice versa. If we can maximum find maximum or minimum, we should find minimum value. Uh, yes, of course, minimum. Okay. The differences between. Uh, uh, whether the point of global maximum is the same for the local and vice versa if the point of local minimum <laughs> is uh, at the same time uh, the point of global minimum so the difference between global and local minimum okay thank you
So, optimization and optimization methods. Okay, that uh, as you have told me, first of all, you were interested in um, the practical tasks. Yes. Yes. First of all, yes. Okay. And, they um, are really very important. If it's possible, please, can you also describe the coordinate descent method? We actually have um, some task related to this topic, so really want to get into this question. Because at the moment we're not really um, into this question, we cannot understand what the main point of this method is. In fact, it is quite easy, easy method. The idea of uh, the method is that we uh, fix all the coordinates among, uh, uh, except one of them, and um, uh, we should change the value of this coordinate in such a way that our function will get uh, the better value. If we fix all of coordinates except one, then we have uh, the function just of one variable, and we can use the methods for uh, the functions of one variable. Um, they are much easy, easier than for the uh, functions of many variables. Uh, so, uh, first of all, we uh, fix all the coordinates except the first one. We find uh, the new value for the first coordinate, and if uh, this, if uh, the function in this point with new one first coordinate is better than in the previous, then we use this value. We fix uh, all uh, the coordinates except the second one and try to change the second one, and so on. Uh, along all the coordinates. And uh, uh, while we uh, uh, can find the better value of function, or uh, while our, well, the difference between the uh, coordinates in uh, two steps are uh, higher than our accuracy, we'll, we should repeat these steps. So just I'm trying to show you. Okay, it looks like you. Um, can you see my sheet of paper? Yes. Okay. So, when we have some function, depends on several coordinates, and we have some initial point. So, we fix all the coordinates except the first one, and for the first one, uh, it's initial. We'll get the new value, some uh, changing. So it would be the previous one plus some additional. Um, value. So our function will, uh, when we'll put new one uh, coordinate there, will be, will depend on this value. 
and we can find such value for this additional term um, in order to improve the value of our objection uh, objective function for uh, this we should find um, the first derivation and it should be equal to zero so we uh, are looking at this function as at the function of this one variable and we'll get the value some what should be first and then we'll calculate our x according to this expression and finally we should calculate the value of our objective function if it is better than the previous one so if we are looking for minimum then it should be less than the previous one then we accept this point and move to another coordinate so we'll have next element where we have already found new coordinate and all others are the same as at the pr previous step and we'll work with the second one coordinate as well as in the first case so we'll find the new value for the second coordinate in the same way we should can calculate how can we analyze is it new value better or not if function? our objection function uh, function decreasing then it is better but so we, should, so we should get the minimum as an optimization yes okay. if, uh, if our objection uh, if the sense of objection function is minimizing and so on then the third one and so so on and uh, then uh, uh, in this way suppose we find the new value but our new value of function is higher than the previous one then we do not accept this changing and we'll try to do the step with another coordinate and if with all the coordinates we do not have some uh, uh, good results then we should stop and uh, the uh, another idea to stop our process is if all the difference in between the uh, the previous uh, uh, the new value and the previous value of all the coordinate is less than some accuracy accuracy depends on our task and we should settle down it ourselves so for uh, its idea of the method and uh, for the practical task you will be given the function uh, it would be the function just of two variables uh, for example um,
this one or maybe something like that maybe uh, some additional term the second power of or something like th like that and you will be uh, will be given the initial point for example zero zero and you uh, are supposed to do one or two steps along with coordinates is it looks difficult It looks quite easy, but I missed the part where we defined the lambda. Mm -hmm. How we choose lambda? The lambda is calculated from this one equation. We have some values for all our coordinates from our initial point or from the previous step. And that would be the function just of lambda. So we just add lambda for every argument and then we try to calculate um, the differential or something yes step by oh. step one by one coordinate we add lambda and calculate the new value for this coordinate okay so for instance in our function that you give as uh, an example it, it will be like um y f will be like 5x1 plus lambda in the second power minus 2x1 plus lambda and so on. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. So now it looks quite easy. And then we analyze the difference between uh, our mm, values for them to, uh, to be less than some mm, defined error epsilon. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Looks quite easy, thank you. Are there any questions on uh, this method? Just a moment, I'll try to look at the chat. Maybe some of you ask questions here. No. Okay. The second one for the problems. Just a moment, I'll open the list. So the method of steepest descent. I gave you for the practical work. So this method belongs to the uh, base gradient, gradient based optimization method and uh, the idea of the methods of all the gradient based methods is that the new point Uh, is in the direction opposite to gradient.
and we should do some step. The length of step is defined by some parameter. So this parameter should be higher than zero. And uh, uh, the idea of different methods is ju uh, just how to um, how to define uh, this step. First of all, the length and um, uh, the and, and it's uh, the length of the step and uh, um, whether it is where the length is uh, constant or it changes from iteration to iteration. So uh, the uh, method of Stephen's descent itself. Uh, Suppose that uh, this, the length of uh, the step should be determined at each uh, iteration. And uh, this, the length should be um, find out as uh, the minimum value of our function. So uh, uh, the direction should be uh, orthogonal to each other, and we um, should so, uh, solve once more just one dimensional optimization task. Uh, I think it would be easier to understand uh, on some example as well. So if we have some function, depends on several variables, then we should calculate the gradient which is um, the derivations along all the coordinates and uh, it is calculated in some points first of all in at the initial point, and then in the found points at iteration. And then uh, we should calculate uh, the difference between the previous one point Sorry. The gradient of function in the point, this one, multiplied by some value of step. It would be once more a vector.
and then we should calculate our function. We should just put oh sorry, I have forgot about our step, the most important part. You should put these coordinates into our function. And so on. So it would be the function depends on the length of the step. And once more, as in the previous case, we should find the derivative which should be equal to zero. And we can find the length of step and put it into expression. In this way, we'll get the next point. And if the value of our function is better, so uh, we accept this new point and try to do it once more. So the idea of the method is in calculating the length of uh, the step at each iteration. As for your practical work, once more, you will be given the, fun uh, the function just of two variables and initial point, and you are supposed to find one or two new points with better function. Is it looks uh, more clear now or no? It's um, a bit messy. Can you please show some like a uh, basic example, maybe with some function? Mm -hmm. This okay. So. Just a moment, I'll found the example I have given you for your homework. I need a few minutes just to find. My notes. I haven't calculated it myself, but that's do it together. I think you have already one example which we, which we have solved on our classwork and for your homework it was this one function. And the initial point was 10 and 10. So, first of all, we should calculate the expression for our gradient.
uh, I ask you to be uh, quite careful and attentive because it was a really difficult day for me and uh, I can make some mistakes. I uh, do not want them to influence your work. So if you uh, have some um, hesitations about my result, please ask me at the moment. And so along to the second coordinate. Would be this one. So then we should calculate our gradient in initial point. So with the values 10 and 10, gradient in zero point would be 10, 10, 200, and 140. Then our new point is supposed to be the difference between initial and um, the gradient in initial point multiplied by the value of step. Then our function in this point will be this one. We just put the these coordinates into our expression. So, if we can open the brackets uh, or we can um, calculate the duration in this way, um, I suppose that I prefer to open the brackets. If I'm not mistaken,
So then we are. So we'll get something like this one. Excuse me, can you please move up paper and see? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just uh, don't want to want to spend time calculating the exact values. And uh, then we should find the derivative along the value of our step that would be this one it should be equal to zero and we can calculate the value of the step and put it into this expression this one so we'll get the first point then we should calculate the value of function in this point. And um, compare it with the previous one with the function. Excuse me again, we cannot see I, what you're Sorry. Again. Thank you. And to compare it with the function in the previous point. If, it, if uh, the first, uh, the new one is better than the previous one, then we repeat all these steps and try to do one more step. But uh, if it is not, so we should just stop uh, this method uh, works quite well uh, for the so-called uh, around equal level lines when um, our function uh, if we cut our function with uh, the uh, horizontal plane, then the line in this plane would be close to round one. And uh, besides, it works well uh, while we are far away from the point of minimum. And uh, when we are close to this point, it uh, it works uh, worse than in the far points. Is it more clear now? Can you repeat uh, if uh, uh, the, uh, the our x1 is better or is more than uh, fx0, it's uh, enough or uh, uh, vice versa? If, if, we, uh, if we are minimizing our function that uh, our new value should be less than the previous one. And if it is not, we should stop. Thank you. Thank you. 
so should we move further or there are some questions on this method? I'll try, I'll try to give you uh, uh, the task with uh, the smaller coefficients than in this case. Of course, okay. it depends uh, on uh, the initial point as well. So, in order to, um, in order for you not to do mistakes in calculations, I'll try to um, find the values smaller for these coefficients. Can we use calculators? Mm, I think yes. It's no problems okay. for using calculations, but not for your phones. Okay, okay. Just of course. calculators. Dedicated calculators, okay. Mm -hmm. So we are mo moving further. Yes, I think it's okay. quite clear now thank you so then the next question is uh, newton newton method okay in this case instead of the function itself we use the second power uh, approximation uh, approximation with the second power function or quadratic function and uh, this is used according to Taylor's expansion and uh, uh, our new point Should be calculated as the previous one. Uh, once more, we are uh, we choose uh, the direction of our step in opposite to as an opposite to gradient. In this point. And um, we should multiply it by the inverse Hessian matrix. So for calculations, first of all, we should find our gradient is the same then Hessian matrix which is
uh, this one, then we should find inverse matrix. I hope you remember how to do it. And just put all these values into our expression. Once more, you will be given the function of two variables. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Teacher doesn't move or change. We have previous page. Or it's only my problem. <laughs> this one you mean? Me too. We don't see uh, any changing pages. Oh, okay, now it's changing. And now it's not changing. This is previous one task? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You need this one page. And paper didn't change at all. Uh, once, once more, please. We were we stick uh, okay. <laughs> Picture is Zavisla. <laughs> Я просто ничего не делаю. I, sorry, I'm just paused as you asked the previous page. And I'm waiting for you to tell me that we can move further. We can move further, but um, you were explaining the next task and mm -hmm. uh, maybe you were writing something, but we were stuck with this page at our yeah, mm -hmm. we didn't see this page. Oh. The video stuck. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what Andre meant. So instead of function in as in the previous one task we use the quadratic approximation which is denoted with the help of Hessen. Once more, new point, the previous one, minus Hessen, uh, the matrix inverse to Hessen multiplied by the gradient in calculated in uh, the previous point. So we should calculate gradient and calculate it in some point. Then, besides, uh, uh, according to the gradient we should calculate our Hessen matrix which is just the second power derivative uh, uh, in respect to different variables then calculate inverse matrix and just to put it all of this in this expression. And of course, once more, as in all the methods, we should calculate the function itself in 
one point and in the new point. So the new one should be less than the previous. I think the at least the calculations are quite easy, quite clear. And the idea is that we use approximation by quadratic function. Are there any questions on this method? Can we investigate it on the real example as, as a previous? Okay. Some function. You're supposed to use the function of two variables. Let it be for example. So first of all our gradient. Then Hessen then um. Some initial point. Let it be once more. Ten ten. So that would be previous point. Minus index Hessian points, uh, Hessian matrix. Uh, in a real task, uh, the values of X can um, be presented in Hessian, then you should calculate uh, Hessian in the initial point. But in this task, when we have just uh, these types of terms will uh, we have already got uh, the Hessian with just the real values. So inverse matrix. Excuse me, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the matrix, uh, I think. The place where you write the six minus two, and in the place of minus two, you write six. The second row mm -hmm. of the matrix. So, um, here, here you mean? Yes, here minus two. No, oh, yeah, 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 yes. So 
that would be our second by yeah minus two thank you and this one would be six thank you very much you're welcome so 16 minus 4 then inverse and our gradient calculated in initial point And then we'll get some values. After what multiplication. What is 80, 40 matrix, matrix? This one, yes. our gradient calculated in initial point. So we put 10, 10, and 10, 10 here. these values we put just the value of our gradient okay got it and then just multiplication I suppose you do not forget how to multiply matrices. We too, we hope. <laughs> of course, it was a joke. I believe you are smart. Maybe it wasn't a joke. No, it couldn't be so. So, some questions? It seems pretty clear. Uh, what would the case if we have, uh, for instance, the fourth power or third power? What will happen with the H matrix? So it will be. It will. Uh, it will include some x values. Mm -hmm. For example, I'll put it just here. For example, x1, x2 plus x1. And you just uh, should put the values in initial point here as well. As well as with gradient, you use values from initial, from the, or from the point in the previous step. And then you have just the numbers. OK, now it's uh, clear. Thank you again. And we have final Lagrange multiplier method. Mm -hmm. OK, this is for constraint optimization task and um, I'll give you just uh, the practical task just with the equality type constraints. So uh, this time we have found that theoretically we have found that we should organize the system of equations using uh, 
the so-called Lagrange multiplier for our constraints. So we have one small function of some variables and um, some constraints. Katerina Alexandrovna, mm -hmm. what is constraint? Uh, constraints is uh, ограничение. Okay, got it. So, uh, in practical uh, task, we'll use just one constraint, but in fact, we can use several of them. And so on. So, uh, can we start from the next example, examples without general points? Okay. Example. Just a moment. А, замочек просто защелкивает или от замочка где-то ключик. Спасибо. Там все выключено, да? В той части. Так, а щиток который? Там середине коридора, там щиток стоит. Бумажка не трогаешь, все остальное выключить. Все. Спасибо. Your department would was uh, uh, very nice to me and uh, allows me to have our meeting in the department and in fact at the moment I'm the only one person here on the fifth floor. Yekaterina Alexandrovna, yeah. question. Will be our department uh, as you know, kind to have uh, second attempt? Where, uh, when will be second attempt? <laughs> Uh, your uh, voice wasn't clear, but I suppose it was Elias? No, it was me, Andrew. I can wow. ask. Okay. It was a traditional question by Elias. <laughs> and I hope this, uh, this time Elias is ready to pass the exam from the first time. Um, I, I hope so. But anyways, so uh, I think several days will be enough for you to prepare. Oh no, you when you have uh, your research work uh, meeting on your research work. I suppose it uh, was uh, planned on. The 30 of January or the 31 of January? On 31st of January. The 31st. So I do not uh, you to uh, do something except your research work during this period. And then you'll need, I think, at least one day to prepare. So the first or the se the second, maybe or February. 
So I let's just hope uh, that will pass tomorrow. I hope so. And uh, also, it's a little a following question. I think that the vast majority of us um, was not wasn't passed uh, an exam of Professor Hemhofer. Uh, so, sorry, uh, uh, once more. I think that the most the vast, of you, the most, uh, the vast majority of us, mm -hmm. didn't pass an exam of Marco Hemhofer. Mm. So, uh, when we will have a chance to uh, do, to have a second attempt, maybe, and will it uh, will it влияет really на стипендию for the Russian students, of course. Uh, of course, it will influence on your. Because we uh, didn't know. still have results, so I'm just. Yeah, and uh, it depends on Marco, first of all. Mm -hmm. We are waiting for results, for the first results, and then um, if we'll have a chance to uh, for you to pass this, uh, the exam before um, uh, our examination office or my office. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, I'll tell it in Russian because it's about uh, um, the money. Uh, I don't know how to say it in English. Uh, scholarship. scholarship. Uh, about school, uh, about your scholarship. До если до приказа успеем получить новые результаты до того до я протяну как только смогу. Буду оттягивать uh, формирование приказа. Но как только будет критичный момент, если не будет результат, к сожалению, останется без стипендии. Первые результаты будут обязательно. А вот вторые, очень надеюсь, что успеем. Ну, наверное, тогда мы в этом семестре без стипендии проживем. Я надеюсь, что вы все у меня со стипендией. Ну, Я вас верю. Спасибо, конечно, но в лучшем случае, по-моему, у нас максимум кто-то сделал почти половину заданий у Хенхофера. И, скорее всего, неуспешно. Судя по проверке. Так что, ладно. Не будем загадывать, дождемся результата. Да. Там как-нибудь в будущем что-нибудь произойдет. Спасибо. So, back to our Lagrange multiplier method. So, we are forming new one. Ah, uh, a real example. Once more, you are supposed to have a function just of two variables. For example. And some constraints. Something like this. Then you are supposed to form new one function, including the function itself and constraints multiplied by uh, some value which is called Lagrange multiplier. So the new function will include the function itself and additional term constraint multiplied by value and the constraint in this one form. So that would be this one. Excuse me, I will rise because uh Picture is freezing. So I'm paused and it's just some internet problems. Tell me if you have 
äh, ein gutes. It's weird. Mhm. So, okay. we have, we have uh, an image of L equals to 5x1 and so on. 5x1 plus 3x2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, so then we calculate the derivatives of L new our function in respect to all variables, including our Lagrange multiplier. So that will be 5 and plus this one then in reference to the second coordinate second variable And finally, in reference to, uh, no, and finally, uh, our constraint is added to our system. Yeah. So we have this, uh, we have the row f from x1, x2 is equal to 5x1 plus 3x2. And then the another row, what is it? 2x1 squared plus x2 is equal to 3. Just a moment. Uh, what is the last row uh, you have seen, you see quite well? The row after the first, the initial function. Uh-huh. So initial function, 5x1 plus 3x2, then constraint 2x1 squared, plus x2 is equal to 3. Then we uh, unite them in new function. 5x1 plus 3x2 plus lambda multiplied by um the function 2x1 squared plus x2 minus 3 and then we calculate the derivation of this new function in reference to x1 and x2. They both should be equal to zero. And one more element we add is the constraint itself. And we get the system of three equations with three variables, x1, x2, and lambda. Then we are supposed to solve this system. And to get the decisions. So we should find lambda, isn't it? We should find the set x1, x2, lambda. And then? And then we should check uh, this point for being the point of minimum. 
as we have done in our classical analysis. Uh, for example, you can uh, find not the only one point in this case. Uh, it depends on your uh, the type of your function and uh, the uh, the your and, and your constraints. And then, uh, as far as I remember, I gave you a, an example where uh, we have two points, two decisions for this system. And we uh, form, we calculate Hessen in both these points and check whether these found points are the points of minimum or is it not? The Hessian is calculated just in the reference to X1 and X2. From these two expressions. So, what about the analysis of stationary points? Uh, so, you get, uh, you construct Hessen. Once more, you have uh, the first derivatives, then the second. The, the image, the image is frozen. So uh, I'll try to write to save your time. Maybe it's uh, it will unfreeze and you will get. So yes, and is the same as we have already done. We have the first derivatives and we should calculate the private, the second private derivatives in reference to um, both variables. Yes. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. Can you explain the question number 15? 15. Yes. Just a moment. I'll open the list of mm -hmm. the phone polyhedron method. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Uh, this uh, method is uh, um, based on uh, idea that uh, we should construct some polyhedron in some area. Uh, this uh, polyhedron should include uh, uh, Sorry, I forgot the word. <sighs> what word? Vershine. Peaks, maybe. No, it's not peaks. Uh... Maybe it's coordinates. Um, 
Google says oh. that it speaks. Yeah, really? Yeah. Speaks vertex. Top. Vertex, yeah. Vertex, okay. Vertex is um, more close to me. <laughs> so, uh, we should construct our polyhedron and uh, calculate the value of function in uh, all the vertexes and then try to um, reflect uh, the point with the highest value of uh, the function. Uh, the point with the highest value of function uh, to find new one point. And uh, if uh, our step is good, then we one more try to find uh, uh, find the vertex with uh, the highest value of function and reflect uh, this one point um, in this case. Uh, so it looks um, For example, we have function of n variables, and we construct uh, construct the um, polyhedron with n plus one vertex. Uh, for example, ma'am, we didn't see the screen. I think it's freezing. Okay. <sighs> As for me, I have uh, the good uh, picture on my monitor, and it's very difficult to me to understand what uh, can you see. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay now. Okay. Then, so um, uh, we should construct the polyhedron and then calculate some so-called center of mass. For example, if we have two uh, variables, then it would be just triangle. We have three uh, vertexes and find uh, some vertex in which the function is the worst. And we should reflect it to the new one and uh, among the new points, three points, if it is better than this one, among new points, we should find once more the vertex with the worst and, for example, this one, and once more reflect it to the new one and so on while we can find the vertices with better value than in previous one. So it's just a general idea, but uh, the most detailed, it's in uh, the hook gifs method, uh, in which we do not just reflect, but try to um, do one more step in the found direction. So we um, change the value of our step, try to change the value of our step each time. 
uh, for uh, the question 15 you are supposed uh, just to um, tell the general idea of the method okay ma'am it's good Can you show previous page, please? Previous one. This one? Yes. And uh Pan Siba. Are there any questions? Mm, I don't think so. It's good. Uh, so what time shall we meet tomorrow? Do you uh, need some more have, time in the morning? Can you explain 20th and 22nd and questions? Okay, the Lagrange multiplier method is um, uh, for uh, the. No, just 20 and 22nd about constraint optimization and ah. inequality types constraints. Constraint optimization with equality type constraints. Uh, uh, you should uh, just in few in a few words so, uh, say that um, we can use some types of constraints, equality types and unequality types. And uh, for exception method, you should say that sometimes you can exclude uh, some variables from. Um, Mm, objective function using constraints. If we'll come back to our example, for example, then from our constraint, can you uh, see the sheet of paper? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we can um, find the value of X2 from our constraint and put it into our objective function instead of x2 and then we'll get just the function of one variable in our case if we initially we have two variables then we'll get the function of one variable and we can use just um, uh, the methods for unconstrained optimization and we have 
less variables. It's the most easiest case, but not all the constraints can be uh, modified to uh, this way to exclude some variables. They can be very complex, and that is why we can't use this method for all the cases. And uh, the 22nd is for um, inequality type constraints. So you should um, mention that uh, it's uh, a task with the, uh, these constraints that they looks like Some inequalities mostly they are less or equal than um, zero. It's a traditional um, way of. Uh, uh, represented the inequality type constraints. And uh, then uh, you should say that this task can be modified to use, uh, for example, Lagrange method by adding some additional um, uh, additional variables uh, for example, as we have uh, our constraint less than zero, then we can add some term some new variable using the second power as it it is higher than zero, uh, we should uh, choose it in this way, uh, which helps us to give equality type constraints. And then we can use Lagrange multiplier method for this task. So we just form one. Um, new task with uh, more variables, one, uh, one additional variable for each constraint. Then we can use Lagrange multiplier method, and then we can exclude these variables from our uh, results. So, in general, this is the idea of the 22nd question. Of course, there are some other uh, methods of uh, solving optimization problems with unequality type constraints, but we have uh, used just only one with you. So about this one method using Lagrange multiplier and bringing our tasks to the uh, task with equality type constraints, you are supposed to give me as an answer for the 22nd question. Okay, I have a question in 9 and 10 uh, task. Uh, what kind of coefficients we must uh, to write? Uh, so, in uh, outer regression models, as well as in uh, um, uh, moving average models, you have some 
uh, coefficients uh, near uh, your values near point, uh, points. And uh, uh, these, we have denoted them A and B, uh, these coefficients, you are supposed to find, to show how we can find them using our autocorrelation function. The most part of our uh, discussion on this topic was devoted uh, uh, to finding, to uh, identifying, uh, identifying our the coefficients of our models. So for moving average, there would be B coefficients and once uh, and uh, the um, dispersion of the process. And um, for outer regression, it would be A coefficients uh, along the previous values of our model. So for outer regression. These coefficients Uh, this one is traditionally equal to one. And for moving average, <coughs> these coefficients once more is zero traditionally equal to one. And we use the uh, expression for autocorrelation function to find them. Are there any questions? Oh, okay. Our chat. Uh -huh. yes. okay. uh, Musab, I think we have already done this. Yes, with numbers. And the phone polyhedron. Uh -huh. Okay, we have already discussed it. More questions? Yes, please. Um, the questions, the question about um, the classic analysis of the stationary points. So mm -hmm. uh, the point is we should uh, we should do um, find some differentials and uh, find differentials which are equals to zero and find the points mm -hmm. or the algorithm is not like that. Um, you should uh, show that if we have uh, the one, uh, the function of one variable is just a traditional um, finding the first and the second derivation, and the first one should be equal to zero, and uh, the second one should be 
um, negative for the point of maximum, positive for the point of minimum, and zero for uh, just, oh, how do we call it? Stationary point. Stationary point, yeah. And for when uh, we have the function of several uh, variables, then we are supposed to uh, calculate Hessian and um, if our Hessian is uh, uh, positively definite, then we have the point of minimum is negatively definite than the point of maximum. And uh, if it is non-positively, non-negatively definite, that is just an ordinary stationary point. Mm. So uh, the Hessian, we, we need to find only the Hessian matrix. Oh, the, the We have the, to calculate of the Hessian matrix, right? Uh, sorry, once more, please. We need to find only the determinant of the Hessian matrix. Uh, they all the basic determinants. The first, the second, starting from the uh, element on the first point. Just a moment. How to find uh, the amount of these points in the case of the complex function? <sighs> complex, uh, you mean the the function of the uh, a couple of variables mm -hmm. uh, so first of all we should calculate the first derivatives they should be equal to zero and from this system we are finding all the points in which we have uh, the first derivative e derivatives equal to zero so and then to analyze the them we use Hessian. Okay, so uh, these point, the, uh, the first derivatives are, it, it, it is the process of finding the gradient of the function. Am I right? Yeah. Ah, okay, so uh, thus we get a set of uh, the extremum points, mm -hmm. which are used to calculate the determinant of Hessian in every point. So uh, this mm -hmm. is the algorithm. Am yes. I correct? Oh, okay, thank you. So I think it's clear now. Thank you. So once more, I have a question to you. What time shall we meet tomorrow? Do you need some uh, a few hours in the morning to repeat the material, and we'll start after it's, after mm -hmm. uh, some afternoon, or we should start in the morning? I think I think it I think it will be good to start at sixteen o'clock if it's okay for you. As for me, it's uh, okay, uh, but uh, what do others think about this idea? So, I'll give you some time to discuss among uh, you all, and uh, Elias, I ask you to, uh, to let me know your decision. As I am here in uh, the fifth building uh, from eight, 
o'clock a.m. and uh, till uh, 5 o'clock p.m. 5 or 5.30. Uh, uh, I can uh, work with you in um, any moment from 8 o'clock a.m. till finishing at 5.30. How many times it takes the whole exam? Uh, I think one hour will be enough, maybe one and a half. Okay, so uh, after we spent this time doing the exam tasks, then what's the, our other actions? So we uh, will have some, some talk with you or, or not? First of all, I should uh, check your works and as uh, they have uh, some practical questions, so I have need some time. And so after you write down all your work, uh, all your works, you are, you can go home and me too. And then I'll check if I have some questions, I'll let you know, but I think uh, your works are enough for my decision. Okay, maybe we can we can help you somehow to do it more effectively or in a more fast way. <laughs> to check them instead of me? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> no, uh, I think uh, that the day after tomorrow I just uh, tell you the results. And if you have some hesitations or if you do not agree with my uh, in my estimation of your work, then we will uh, we'll be able to discuss them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we'll receive uh, the marks right to the next day after the exam. Yes. Uh, then if we start at 16, uh, then we we'll uh, but in the evening, so I need some time in the, mo in the morning to check your work, so it would be mm, mm, afternoon, not in the morning. I will be too tired in the evening to check them. Okay. I'll start in the morning at 8 o'clock for checking them. And as well as I'm ready, I'll send you the results. Okay, thank you. And so uh, we'll get the marks to the to our record books um, somewhere in February, maybe. Is it allowed? Uh -huh. Your uh, record books, I think, зачетки, да? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, they are in any case, will go to me mm -hmm. because uh, after all your exams, I should check them as a executive director of the institute. So, and uh, I'll put all your marks in them. I'll check in other notes. It won't be a problem okay. for me. And for you as well. Because uh, we have only marks for Sidov's exam, Professor Sidov's exam. So we, we have uh, marks with Alexei Alexandrovich's exam mm -hmm. only in Blackboard. So mm -hmm. okay. also it took some time to check exam. Um, so you have. Uh, the test and tests and uh, exams with uh, Arthur Kamilch Geisen, with Professor Sedov, Professor Karabkov, and me. No, and besides Marco and uh, Michael. 
uh, with right. guys and we have uh, that shot I don't know how to say it in English like pass exam mm -hmm. passed or not passed and with Professor Sudo we have uh, the real exam mm -hmm. and yes also we have exam with you with Alexei Alexandrovich and finally with Professor Hanhofer. Mm -hmm. Okay, that it won't be a problem for me to get all the notes for all your tests and exams. Okay, okay, that's okay. So you are supposed to give all your notebooks for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think that's all for now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Uh, I think the best way to prepare for exam at night is to sleep well, because you, ha you should have a rest by all means, and then you have time in the morning to repeat some things. And I will be glad to see you tomorrow at the moment which you will tell me a little bit later. And if you are, I'll have no message for you, then you'll have it at 16 o'clock. Okay. Uh, anyways, I will text you about time. I think we'll, uh, it won't take a long to decide for us. Okay. Thank you for your questions, for your interest. So, thank you. Goodbye for now. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.